Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Phase Ghost, and here's what he has to say. Hey Sandman, I'm rolling through again dude with another topic in mind, and this one is a feeling that I've been having and wondering about if it's true. So here goes. As of this date, the day that I'm typing this to you a week ago, I was hanging out with a female friend of mine on Saturday night. She spent the night at my place and the following day everything was pretty much smooth. So as an Uber was coming for her to take her home, we were talking. Random stuff mostly, but she said something rather interesting. I'll do what I can do to remember how she said it. As we were talking, she threw out this. I like that you're an asshole, but not to me. Now for the following week at work, it got me thinking. Like I'm not an asshole, but yes, I can be a bit snappy. All my years in high school plus a few years after, I was quite a geeky kind of dude. Chilling with my friends at the after school video games club or the library playing Yu-Gi-Oh. But now that I'm remembering all that this ex said to me, the same thing kept going through my mind. This was an ex from when I was 19 to 25. She says that I have asshole tendencies and that's funny because she wouldn't have thought of me as being a peacock. But after we broke up and a few club scenes here and there, I got better at dressing myself, plus was a little bit more smoother with women. And yes, she didn't like it even if we were just friends. But my question is, how does one go from card battling to I'm too cool for shit with an ego while at the same time not changing or staying a man that's pretty much a doormat? Dude, spin this topic any which way you like. Your advice is always top-notch in my books. Thanks. Well, Phase Ghost, thanks for your topic as well as your donation. Your story got me thinking about relationships in general, especially the ones where couples are together for many years or decades, very much like my parents, and the man is an asshole alpha male and the passive beta male at the same time. What your female friend that left in the Uber was trying to say was that she as a woman wants a man that she can walk all over, but at the same time she wants him to stand up to all the other people in his life. She wants him to be her doormat and dump for toxic emotional garbage, while at the same time she wants him to put people in their place when they're being bad. What she wants is for you to be the master over others, but a slave to her at the same time. Not a slave by doing everything that she wants you to do, but instead, she wants you to know when to be assertive and when to be passive. So your question might be more like this. How does a man stay a dominant alpha male while being a beta male and becoming a doormat at the same time? And the answer to that is you actually have to have the right mentality. You have to behave like an alpha male and believe that everything you do is right, while at the same time keeping the mentality of the underdog. You have to have a duality in your mind because that's what women seem to like. You have to know when to let her win and when to defeat her and put her in her place. You have to play around with her and make her think that she has the upper hand and just when she's doing her little victory dance, you have to pull the rug from under her legs and watch her fall on her bottom. She'll respect you even more as she's rubbing her sore ass. But you also have to be careful so that such behavior doesn't backfire in your face and make you appear to be a snob. A good example is Patrick Stewart from Star Trek fame when someone actually at a convention asked him about the very fact that we don't have technology that makes food out of thin air pretty much the replicator. He said that he already has this technology personally in his life and it's called a chef. And when he said this, no one seemed to laugh because it wasn't a joke that was accessible to most people. Because most people aren't wealthy enough to have a personal chef. He came across as being an asshole and showing off his obviously much higher status than everyone else and rubbing it in everyone's faces, and he was oblivious to the meaning of what he had just said. I think that it's more complicated than being either a master or a slave. How can a man be an alpha male and a beta male at the same time? People like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs used to do this all the time in their talks by wearing jeans to show everyone that they were hard-working underdogs just like the rest of their employees. Except then they would get into their yachts that are hundreds of feet long after their talks. But the important part was that people didn't actually see them as rich bastards. Instead, they saw them as men that appear humble and empathize with their employees. The best way to protect yourself from becoming someone else's bitch or doormat is to stand up for yourself and women like to see that because it shows that you have self-esteem and self-worth. But if you don't have that worth to begin with, then the best way to build it up is to spend time alone and do something like learning dance moves behind closed doors like Napoleon Dynamite. And then unleash your mad skills on people when they least expect them and then watch popular opinion change. You can't be strong without confidence in yourself. What people hate the most is a person with confidence but didn't actually do anything to deserve that confidence in the first place. That's the person that has self-respect just because. And it often drives people absolutely crazy that someone can have self-esteem but not have actually done anything with his agency to influence the world or the people around him. For most of my young life, I was confident and happy, but I would actually drive alpha male types crazy because I was just as confident as they were, but I didn't have the so-called position, so they were constantly trying to basically make an example of me. No matter how much they tried beating me down, I kept coming back to the surface. One year, there was a tricycle race being held in my school, and I got together a band of five or six short run kids that were constantly being picked on because I knew that if I assembled the kids that were the really tiny doormats in the school, then they would be small enough to ride those tricycles to victory. 
And after a number of races, it was the really big jock kids in the finals with the tiny kids. So we ended up winning against the jocks, and they were sore losers, and many of the kids lost respect for them, because here were the kids that they were picking on day after day, finally beating them at something. It was funny to watch these huge jocks in middle school peddling tiny bicycles, because it wasn't just a game for them, it was pretty much their honor and status on the line. They couldn't have the losers in society finally beat them. Recently, Turd Flinging Monkey did a video about master and slave morality, and I'll actually put a link to that in the description below. I agree with Turd Flinging Monkey that having a master mentality is beneficial, and that most slaves are just there waiting for handouts. What's worse is that many of these slave-type mentality people are being like doormats and having other people walk all over them into something that's useful for them to gain sympathy and power from others. In the West, it was Christianity that made it virtuous to be poor and stand up to or criticize those with power simply because you yourself are powerless. But then something interesting happened with Christians because they became the leaders after Constantine made Christianity the official religion. When the Christians became the winners, they still needed to maintain this illusion that they were still humble and poor, even though they actually had all the wealth and power. It's kind of difficult to make everyone think that you're humble when you're the one drinking from the golden cup. But that's exactly what women want men to be, tough and ball-busting everyone else on their behalf, but still treating her like she's a golden angel. Also, women want everyone to believe that they are the doormats for men, even though it's the other way around, and that we're always somehow taking advantage of them. Many women want their men to go out into the world full of self-esteem and confidence and stomp on everyone else around him on her behalf. I remember back when I was in relationships with my ex-girlfriend, she would often get really angry if another woman was using me as a doormat. She got jealous about that, and a few times I thought that she was going to approach my female clients and say that he's my emotional tampon, so go find your own. My advice to men out there that are always getting suckered into being doormats, but don't have the balls to say no to the people asking, is to put yourself in situations where people aren't going to ask you. Obviously, it's important to learn to stand up for yourself, but if you've actually been conditioned for long enough not to be able to stand up for yourself anymore, then the best thing to do is live alone and be alone, because if there aren't people around to walk all over you, then you can be more productive in life, as well as more sane by avoiding others. The idea is that if people can't see the doormat, then they can't step on it. If you happen to be a good person and always get taken advantage of because it's in your nature, no matter how hard you work to make yourself a bastard, then perhaps you need to basically put yourself in a safe space where people can't take advantage of you anymore. Phase Ghost, with your type of personality, you can obviously be a nice beta male provider as well as an alpha asshole if you need it to be. You can obviously be the bipolar man that the woman wants you to be. My question is, why are you still getting involved with women like that? Doesn't it bother you that they want you to act like Dr. Simp and Mr. Asshole? Why do you seem to want to change yourself to have even more of a split personality to pursue the slit between her legs? I can understand that you might want to change your behavior to get action and attention from women, but you also have to understand that if you rewire your mind and reprogram yourself to behave like that, then the women around you will probably keep doing it for the rest of your life. I'm just saying that once you start changing your behavior for a little action, then you start compromising more and more of your personality for a woman. The reason this woman is probably telling you to be nice to her is probably because she sees some kind of future with you and she's trying to change you to be more the man that she wants you to be. Are you really going to let this happen to you? She wants you to be her bitch and doormat and you're just asking me how you can be a doormat without being one at the same time. Next thing you're going to tell me that you got this girl almost pregnant or something similar. She obviously has a future with you planned out in her head if she's trying to recondition you like that. Once a woman thinks that you're in love with her, she'll start getting you to change things about yourself. This is your cue to exit stage left, and even before I went my own way, if a woman told me that I needed to get a haircut, or that I should go to the gym more, or grew myself differently, that's pretty much when it was time to leave. They don't see your body, brain, behavior, and utility value as belonging to you. They don't see you as a sovereign, independent man in front of them. They see you as someone that needs to be molded and changed into someone different to make her own life better. Yesterday I was shooting a wedding and I spoke to a married guy. He was a DJ and told me that marriage was supposed to be hard work. And then I asked him, for who, the man or the woman? He said that both of you have to work hard. I asked him how hard he worked and he told me he works 50 hours a week as a carpenter and then does the DJ gig on the side on the weekends as well as making sure everything else is taken care of around the house and also that his wife is happy. I then asked him how hard his wife worked at the relationship and life that they have together and he had a hard time coming up with things besides cooking. Then he says you also have to have love and trust. I said we both know that you love and trust your wife, but does she love and trust you back? He says of course she does. I answered by saying, but she's constantly texting you all night. I guess she checks up on you because she trusts you. He didn't know what to say at that point. But he was a totally hopeless mangina doormat doing pretty much everything that she wants. Anyways, I just want to end today's video by saying that women want you to assert yourself with others and take charge, 
but they also want you to stay humble as a man without being a doormat for people to step over. You have to have a bit of both the master and the slave inside of you. Phase Ghost, you have to appear to this woman that you mentioned earlier to be both the alpha and the beta. Women can't make up their minds and they oftentimes want things that are directly in opposition with one another. They want a man that towers over all the others with status, but they also sometimes want a beta male because he's going to nurture her and her young. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, Phase Ghost, for your donation, and as for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the boot heels from stomping your face away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.